Not once, not twice has he made headlines, oftentimes for the wrong reasons. But could it be us who get him twisted? I'm talking about none other than Gatundu South Member of Parliament, Moses Kuria. Well, he is our person of interest today on the fourth edition of CSA Brigade that comes to you every Wednesday and Sunday. And also remember, Business Guide is still there, so keep tuned to Herman Manura's channel. But also remember, before we come to the tale of this conversation, as always, we'll have our Wheel of Time segment. And today, we are truly honored because we want to understand perhaps why Herman Manyora dedicated one of his high-selling books to his late mother, Mama Netsia Itago, and if he feels he has made her proud over time and lived to the expectations of a mother to a son. My name is Richard Mwenja, truly honored that you've joined us for yet another edition. And let's jump straight to this conversation. Herman Manyora. Yes. You're looking good today. Thank you, Richard. But please comment on my shirt, you know. The shirt is good. <laughs> From 10,000. Hakika 10,000 designs. Wonderful. So definitely if you want to get uh, a similar uh, shirt or perhaps even better, contact uh, Odanga on the number uh, displayed at the bottom part of your screen. That is Hakika 10,000 designs, giving you the best offers in the market when it comes to fashion and design. Good. Today on CSA Brigade, we are looking at Moses Kuria, Gatundu South Member of Parliament. You will agree with me that, of course, the elite Kenyatta's family passed on the baton to Moses Kuria uh, with regards to the larger Gatundu politics. But over time, we've seen the fallout between Uru Kenyatta and uh, Moses Kuria. Now, we want to understand, who are the losers and gainers uh, from this fallout? Would you say that perhaps the Kenyatta's family is somewhat losing grip when it comes to matters Gatundu politics, or it's the other way now, around whereby now Moses Kuria is falling from grace? You know, Kenyatta is an institution. Kenyatta is a monument. How can you bring down a monument? Mm -hmm. I mean, a boy dancing around a monument. They can't. Moses Kuria is it's not in the same league with the Kenyatta's. But then how dare do you go against the wishes of your godfathers in the political Many industry? people do that. Many people do that sometimes to their detriment. Moses Kuria couldn't have won this seat if, if mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta didn't make it possible. There are many things surrounding when he went for the by-election including some people being prevailed upon not to stand, to leave it to Moses. I mean, he's, he's a small man. All right. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get to issues regarding his future in politics. But also, let's go back a month ago and remember, during the Kenya Kwanzaa, he made uh, quite an infamous speech dubbed uh, uh, Kwani Nikesho, where he was talking about graft and telling, challenging uh, Martha Karua and Raila Odinga to first deal with persons implicated in graft on the Jubilee side and the larger Azmio coalition, where he said, the masterminds of graft actually in Uhuru's government, in Uhuru's coalition. And he actually talked of Uhuru saying that he's perhaps the head or pioneer of graft and said, Ukiwa nyoka ya corruption owa pia kichwayake, implicating Uhuru in such allegations and so forth. Would you say that over time Moses Kuria has developed the moral authority to speak about graft in this country? I have said this. <laughs> I, I'm, I want, I'm getting tired of saying it, but let me say it again. In the interest of Richard Mwenja, <laughs> Business, uh, but, um, yeah, economist and political scientist yes, of some sort. Rolled into one. Uh -huh. These leaders are all thieves. They were, nobody has a moral authority to point at the other. They are all thieves. None of them can explain to me how they make their money, how they make their money. None. But Let them come. Any of these people, how? You, where? When is this to Nalala? We, we are very. Why don't we have money ourselves? All right. It's because perhaps you have not had the opportunity to steal. These guys just are thieves, all of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't like the idea of one saying one is a thief. All right. And there's no honor among thieves. All right. Yeah. So why would Moses Kuria point at anybody else? All right. And I'm not saying he's a thief. But uh, if I were to scrutinize him, maybe I would not be surprised that uh, he has a few coins he can't explain. He could be the only saint remaining in the political maybe. world. Maybe. He know? could be. I don't know his personal life. I don't know what he owns or what he doesn't own. But I'm just saying in a very general way, it's very difficult to find a, a, a leader, a member of parliament who has not cheated on CDF, who has not cheated on mileage and other allowances from parliament, who has not contributed to the greed of parliament and, and all manner of things, who has not used their office to, to cut deals with government, tendering. It's very difficult. But the, it doesn't mean you can't find one or two. Kuria could just be one of those, one or two uh, that you'll find clean. Maybe any way you a pamba. Okay. Yeah, but uh, so I don't know. All right. Yeah. A number of Kenyans have actually touted Moses Kuria as an active volcano when it comes to his utterances in the public and the kind of statements, bold ones, that he makes 
oftentimes out of emotions, many people are saying so, but somehow don't you see there's so much danger in his utterances that probably in the near future, just like Western Pro Kenya, it's going to divide the Mount Kenya block that has for quite a long time been united, but now Moses Korea is, is, and, and a few others are perhaps shifting to a different direction. And you know, utterances can have a major impact on the uni uniting factor of uh, the Mount Kenya block. How much of a danger is this? outburst personality you know sometimes my friend was a is a loose cannon you know he speaks and you are left wondering is he normal but there are certain things you can say we are witnessed what has happened to other countries around us mm -hmm. we are surrounded by countries that have had it really rough there have been chaos in places like rwanda for very simple things for other countries that are nowhere near what moses korea does so some of these things can burn a country and when they come from a leader who knows the potential, the danger potent, that, that is potent by what they are saying, mm -hmm. and they are leaders of a certain level, sometimes you are left wondering whether they are normal. Well, that's, that's, that's me now. Because there are certain things a leader uh, at the level of Moses Kuria shouldn't say, but he's so prone to saying it. Right. I think it's because he's cheered on. It's because sometimes there are people who like to hear that. Creating fodder. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and it's really dangerous All for right. a country, yeah. Sticking to the context about his choice of diction and uh, his speeches and all that, you've seen him make some demeaning remarks uh, uh, geared towards uh, Raila Odinga. And I only want to mention it, but he talked of a bit something to do with the crying personality of Raila Odinga, which was orchestrated by the torture he underwent through the second liberation struggle and so forth. When he can pick fights with the big candidates, his godfathers in the political world, people who mentored him somewhat and shaped the politics of this country. Don't you see, going into the future, it is until that point where he goes back as a prodigal son and say, Uru Kenyatta, you passed on the baton to me, Raila Odinga, you've been the father figure in the world of politics, that probably his future in politics can be secured, or is at the point where he's lost I want to all? tell you something. All right. These people, established names and figures, you can call them deep state, you can call them system, Yes. you can Elites. call them this, these people. Let me just call them these people. They are very patient. They can, you can say anything you want about them. But at the right time, they can strike. And you can find Moses Kuria walking the streets of Kiambu with a, green pair, with a pair of uh, <laughs> slippers. One is green, another one is blue. All right. I'm telling you. They're not over the elders. Ah, these guys can finish if they want. It happens across the world. They, but they are patient. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want to advise people. They are patient. You would wonder why people so close to Huru Kenyatta. People Huru Kenyatta has literally picked from the dustbin. From litter bin. From, I, I read somewhere, one of them was killing himself with, with, with local brew somewhere. Huru picked him and gave him a big job in the system. You'd wonder why he will say nasty things about Uhuru and Uhuru is quiet. I just want to advise people, from my knowledge of what happens across the world, systems are very patient. I see. Very patient. Look, systems even like the ICC. Even people who are hunting the Nazi, whatever. In, but 30, 40 years, they pick you. Systems are, ve but systems are also very lethal. They are very very little venomous very little but they are so patient you think you are having your way and that they are fools uh, and basically again is they don't even need to do anything you just require their goodwill in many of the in many instances you just require their goodwill Bless it's like the panel. oil of your life anointing oil it's just the oil that otherwise chuma zitakulana za maisha yako chuma chuma yako ya maisha inakulana so they don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. Just say, okay, you are Moses Kuria. You think you are clever? Fine, go ahead. You try this governor position, you lose. Your debtors begin following you. They have nothing. It's nothing to do with Uhuru. People just know you're out of power now. The people used to give a few tenders, CDF and that, what have you, and the people who gave you money, money stops com coming in. People you owe begin coming for, you for your money. Things you took for granted, you would go here and get some 10 million is not there. The taps begin drying. You begin looking for Uhuru Kenyatta. All he has to do is just to ignore you. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. He just ignores you. And you're sent to the They are never in a hurry and they, are never, they never get angry. But they are little. I see. Little even by just leaving you to suffer when they are seeing when they can help you. 
Are you somewhat signaling that the fullness of time, mm. sh I mean, should the wiggle room be extended to Moses Korea to make amends with Raila and Uru Kenyatta? That should be the best decision he can make around it, himself. But, uh, Raila has forgiven Moses Korea endless times and he has assisted him, he has picked him from places. But there is, there is, there is an end to, uh, there, there are times when it, enough is enough. Such Even people point. close to Raila, if they saw him embracing Korea, they would get very annoyed. They would tell mm -hmm. him, we know you are a very patient man, but this guy has been Kwani Ninini. Hmm? Raila is very patient. You can say, Kuri has said things about Raila. But you made them meeting Samaki. So he doesn't know. Raila is just in the system with Kinauru. All right. These are system people. These are established names and figures and families. They are very patient. Could that be the and they come off oh. like they are, well, who they are. They are not always good people. You may, you may be thinking they are very good. No! So I think I advise people. The hand that has fed you, the hand that has fed you, be careful. A hand from which you have fed, I'm advising people like Moses Kure, a hand from which you have fed, be, ve be very careful how you relate with that hand. All right. Be but very careful. I'm not saying you, you go down on your knees just because somebody has helped you. No, people help you. I am a side, you are a malingine. But a hand from which you have fed, mm -hmm. be careful her. How you relate with that hand. All right. You, you, you get it. Because I'm singing for Uru Kenyatta. There are so many of these people who have turned against Uru. But there are people who has really picked from nowhere and made them. You could disagree with him. You could even join a camp other than his. But be very careful what you say about somebody who are, from whose hand you have fed. It's just a very African way of looking at things. Mutu ambaye umekula kwa mkono yake. Be very careful what you say about them. It's just like saying, if people are stoning your brother mm -hmm. because he has misbehaved or whatever he has done, don't throw a stone. Let others throw. You go away. You know I'm a kosa, Kapsa? I'm a kosa. You know I came a fool and things fall apart. Don't strike. Just go away. So a hand from which you are fed, be careful. That's all that people like Moses Korea. Does that somewhat, somewhat explain why the likes of Ababu Namababoni Halwale have yeah. gone into the perilous journey of yes. political distress? Yes, yes, yes. You'll see them. Most of these people, you see them walking the streets. I'm telling you. I'm not cursing anybody. I'm, I'm just saying how, how life works. When you are not grateful, <laughs> when you don't remember where, where the journey you have traveled, the people who have assisted you, when in turn, or when in instead, you say all manner of bad things about people who have made it possible for you, to be what you are. Even God in heaven doesn't like it. All right. So, you don't have to agree with Huru Kenyatta if you are Moses Kuria, Justin Mturi, or Moses Mdavadi, son, what do you call him? Salam. You don't have to agree with Huru Kenyatta. But to the extent that he has made your life what it is, I'm not saying all of them, but somehow, I'm just throwing around names, which I hear people throwing around. Be careful, because that hand, you are fed from that hand. That's well an African noted. way of looking at things. Well noted, sir. But a while back, we saw Moses Kuria come up and say that his preferred candidate to be DP's uh, running mate was actually speak of National Assembly, Justin Muturi. However, he said he is still okay with the Rigathi pick, but he says that somewhat that could possess danger for the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, Alliance when it comes to the August polls. Could, can, are we confident enough to perhaps say that he had actually smelt doom on the side of, of, of Kenya Kwanzaa and you perhaps know, started conceding defeat? You know, <laughs> of course, Kenya Kwanza is losing. I've said many times. And Moses Kuria is a, is a seasoned politician. He knows Ruto cannot win the presidency. In fact, let me tell you, I'll be very surprised if Moses Kuria doesn't cross the floor before the elections. I'll be very surprised. <laughs> this guy, you know, but the thing about people like Moses Kuria, mm -hmm. they are somehow not normal in the way in which they do things. Sometimes they speak out of... To, uh, they, they kind of... Uh, they Emotions. speak recklessly, <laughs> dangerous utterances. But they have also a knack for knowing things. There's some intelligence. Almost every madman has something about him that a normal person ha doesn't have in terms of intelligence. So somebody like Moscow, I'm not saying he's mad. I'm just saying the way in which he speaks. Normal people don't speak the way he speaks about certain things, <laughs> using certain well and re making reference to certain people in a dangerous way. But the guy also has a knack for things. He knows. He can smell politics. He knows the direction of politics. 
if you are to sit with Moses Kure, if he's your friend, he's my friend, I think I'm look out for him one of these days. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you Raila is waiting. He knows. Yeah, Kuria would not realize. He might cross over any day. Anyway. Any day. All right. Of course, in any case, he's not even getting the governor position in, in, in Kiambu. Kiambu. He won't even get 20,000 votes. I was actually going to go there. He's gunning for the Kiambu gubernatorial bid, yes. facing off with, of course, his own politicians, Wamatangi, Kabogo, and Nyore, yes. and so forth. Kafa, kafa. Out of a scale of, uh, in a scale of 1 to 10, uh, what are his chances that he'll get the ticket? 8 out of 10? 0 0.5. Zero. Less than 1%. <laughs> that Come race on. is simply between Nyoro. Uh, Nyoro and Wamatangi. Of course, Kafogo will make some showing, but I'm not seeing this. The, the way I'm telling you, I've said this in other shows, I can see a number of people going to Azimio. Even you look at the way they are campaigning for the positions across Mount Kenya. They don't look like people who are in this race for Senate, for governor. They, they don't look like they are just there. They will move at the right time to destabilize William Ruto. Kafogo could be one of those people. Okay. I don't think he's garnering for this, this seat. All right. Yeah. Before we wrap up, we saw a month ago, he was actually, Moses Kuru was actually summoned by the IEBC Disciplinary Committee yes. over allegations he made with regards to the integrity of the 2017 polls. And he said actually a section of Mount Kenya leaders uh, were involved in rigging the votes and that actually the Jubilee win wasn't actually, was more of a manufactured win. And actually this could spell doom when it comes to the integration and cohesion and uh, peace during elections this year. Why would a leader who is very active in national and local politics make such statements at a critical time when he knows he was part of that very coalition in 2017, the Jubilee one? You know, this is a country of many flashpoints. I mean, Moses Kuria should know that some of these things can cause havoc. That's what I'm saying. He has a problem. He's a good man. He's a friend. and He's a good man. He's very intelligent, by the way. Moses Kuria is a very intelligent human. When you debate him like I've debated him, you can see a brain at work. But there's something that, I don't know whether it's always deliberate or for fun or stupidity. Some of the things, like about elections, at a time like this, mm -hmm. there are certain things you can't say. All right. Yeah, as a leader, leaders are people who have many things they can say, but they don't say. Nice. And if they must say them, they look at the timing. A time like this, when we are in a very, very heated election, highly emotive, highly divisive, not more than even competitive. A leader wants to be very careful about what they say. Okay. The very last, uh, you see, Moses Kuria is not on the Azimio side. He's not under now the direct wings of President Uru Kenyatta, his, his uh, predecessor in Gatundu politics and so forth. In the fullness of time, people have actually uh, touted you as a political prophet. How secure is his political future if he's not going to be in the camp of Raila Odinga before this election or in the side of Uru's, uh, Uru, uh, I mean, Uru's side? Let me tell you this. <laughs> Any serious politician in Mount Kenya who is not likely to win an election, but they are serious like Moses Kuria, their future lies in them quickly sh shifting to Azimio. Because those who win like, like Wamatang, my friend, as soon as Raila is sworn in, they will move to Huru and Raila. Ditch comes. Oh, of course. It won't even take a month. They'll loyal to Kwaraila, Mze, Baba, Tukohapa, Ilikuwa Siata, Tukwata Nacheza. Now we'll work with some who will even defect official and face electorate again in, in the Mount Kenya. So the, the Mount Kenya counties, almost without exception, maybe Meru or so, mm -hmm. are going to vote UDA governors, UDA, whatever it is. Kenya Kwanza. But without exception, all of them will move to Huru Kenyatta and, and Raila Odinga after victory. But those who will have nothing to move with, like Moses could have gone, they will have lost. Nobody will entertain them. They will have no value. And that will be the end of their political career. For so people like Moses could have really advised them, this is the time to move to Azimia. Okay. Because, because there's no other way. Otherwise, as soon as you lose, you'll be forgotten. But the person who wins... UDA governor, governor on UDA. They will something. They will be walking into Huru and Kenyatta with something mm -hmm. that we are here to work with you, sir. Our loyalty. You know, so we are sorry that that was just politics. We are misled. All the words. Eh? We are sorry, and uh, yeah, but uh, we work with you. I get. But if you are most clear, you are walking empty-handed to Raila. In the middle of nowhere. Takao State House. 
Two months of Ngoja hapo gate hata fungua hata fungulia wewe making calls yeah. and all that hakuna hiyo simu zote azichukuliwi hata <laughs> umebadilisha number so my advice to Mount Kenya politicians this all is right. the time open your eyes widely look at what's going on if you are not going to win that seat you are running for senate and you can see as a citizen politician you would know Moses Kure knows he can't he can't even get you ask me 10 to 1 to 10 mm -hmm. he can't even get one out, out of 10 and also he can't take you not get 10% of the votes cast in Kiambu All and right. he knows it move to Azimio where you'll be relevant ingia campaign ya Raila na Uhuru anza kuchapa kazi you'll be relevant na utapatia kwa kitu kidogo backing amba hiyo you lose your presidential candidate loses and you are forgotten All right. Yeah. Well, there you have it from the firebrand himself, Vihiga's finest export, Haman Manyora, delivering nuggets of wisdom to none other than Gatundu South, member of parliament Moses Korea, on what decisions could work in his favor in, in, when it comes to matters uh, 2022 general elections. Before I leave, remember, there is the Wheel of Time segment whereby we look at uh, the life of uh, Haman Manyora, his low lights and highlights, and perhaps what you can pick from that that can challenge you to be a better version of yourself. And today you want to understand why one of his high-selling books is dedicated to his beloved lead mother, Mama Netsia Itago, and whether as a young boy who has seen many things in life, he feels he has lived to the full potential envisioned by her very, I mean, his very own mother. Talk to us about it. You know, I, I, I'm not even happy that uh, I didn't do for my mother what I should have done. And I always tell people, mm -hmm. a friend of mine called Habwe, I tell him, mm -hmm. You have two ways you can drive as you go home to your home in Kitale. You can use the Kisumu route, in which case you can say hi to your mama just on your way. Mm -hmm. But you can also use the Eldoret route Our and son. land your wife and your home in Kitale. Mm -hmm. Your mother, my friend. When Whenever a friend of mine loses a mother, I can feel them. The most recent, I think, was... I think it was Raphael or somebody like that, Andrew, Andrew Moore. They have friends when I, when I talk to them. I feel the love of a mother and the love for a mother is second to none. Uh, you know that when you have lost your mother. When she's not there, then you begin to realize what she was in your life. So uh, uh, the only regret I have is that I never did for my mother what I should have done for my mother. I did a, I did a lot. Everybody knows those who know me. I did quite... But I could have done more. I wish I did could have more. Done better. Whenever you, so I ask people who are mothers, especially old people like us, don't move away from that lady. Don't stay long without seeing her. When you lose your mother, the pain you you experience. I've never met a man. When I lost my mother in 209, some counselor, he was a counselor, a friend of mine, JB, I call him JB. He came and when he rose to speak, he said, I know there are people who are saying, ah, after all, this is an old woman. But you don't know what you're talking about. He said, I know what this guy is going through. I also lost my mother when she was old, but the pain of a mother. I'm not <laughs> saying when I lost Mze Moja, my father didn't feel it, but the pain of a mother. So in other words, you asked me, I said, yes, she would be happy of me. She would be happy. She, has always, she was always happy that she has raised her son like me against all loans. The little I have done in life, the little I have achieved, not much to show, but she was always proud of me. I tried to make her proud. But I only feel that I should have done more. But at and least... I advise my friends, when your mother is alive, please, if your mother is alive, you see her in December and stay the whole year without ever seeing her, please, I advise you, when you, you have time, don't let it be a question of you have sent her some 2,000 shillings or 10, whatever it is. Try and see your mother. Because when your mother is not there, I still miss Nezi up to now. Nezi Itago. Nezi Itago. He actually made her way into your book. Chana I mean. Uh, she, she was my life. All right. Yes. Well, there you have it from Haman Manyora. Of course, really appreciating the value and impact her late mother had uh, in uh, his life to death. And he says that you need to take good care of your parents, not just your mother, but stretch it also to your father, your siblings, whoever that person is. Make sure they feel loved while they are still alive. Until next time on CSR Brigade, my name is Richard Mwanjan. Be blessed. Thank you.